Welcome to Nitpicking Nerds, and there's a new secret layer out, so we gotta talk about it. We are evaluating and grading the Secret Layer X Street Fighter Bundle for Commander. I'm your host, Joe Cherries. I'm your host, BZ, and that makes us the Nitpicking Nerds. If you have a birthday, it might be today, so happy birthday if it's your birthday today, because we make videos every single day. It's enough for every birthday. If you want to support birthdays and us at the same time, patreon.com is the link for you in the description. Yes, and if you want to support us indirectly, you can go buy Magic Cards using our TCG Player affiliate link. They're our buddies. You go over, buy cards off their website, and if you started with our link, you are now supporting the nerds. Other sponsor of this channel slash sponsor of Shuffle Scuffle, Dragon Shield. We have an affiliate link for that as well. You go to that, EU, US link, either one, buy the sleeves you were going to buy anyway because they're the best sleeves in the multiverse. What sleeves? And who said that? I don't know who said that, but you can get them and you will support the nerds while doing so. Yeah, they're an affiliate of the show and a sponsor of the gameplay. Yes. Got there. What are we doing today? Today, we're taking a look at all of the new secret layers. There are eight or nine. Nine of them. Nine in total. So we're going to take a look at them and we're going to tell you what we think of them, if they're good for Commander, if you should buy them for Commander. We're just going to go over all of that. But first, before I even tell you if you should buy these, shouldn't buy these, or if we like them or not, just based on what they look like, I'm going to make a suggestion. Personally, if they're not etched foils, which I don't think any of these are, don't buy them. Don't buy the foil secret layers. I have had nothing but negative experience with these at this point. We just got our secret layer... Um, Stranger Things. X Stranger Things, and we got the foil one incredibly curled and it's not even reasonably curled they are almost not sleeve playable cards if you're looking we're we are always talking about functionality when it comes to cards we're not talking about as collector's items we're not talking about for any other reason like if you want to keep the box sealed that's not what we're doing we're talking about taking the card and putting it into a commander deck either as the commander or into the 99 meaning you do not want it bent because it's in a deck you don't want it to be marked best case scenario you got a crapshoot worst case scenario the card is unusable the, the secret layer stranger things cards i mean you buy them we waited what, like six months for them and now they're sitting in a book under a bunch of weight because we have to wait two more weeks to flatten them out and then check they probably won't be done and then we'll have it's like you have to cook your cards it's like i want to just play with the cards i order and we just you know like we ordered the etched foil demons like those are perfectly normal they were perfectly fine it's like what are we? Well, I don't know what the, the deal is with these foils, but they are unusably bad for playable qual quality. So for going forward in this, if we suggest and we think something is cool and that you should buy it, it is a non-foil we're mm -hmm. suggesting. We are 100% saying don't buy the foil secret layers because, like you said, at best, it is a crapshoot. Let's get into the first one. It's the namesake of the whole Super Drop bundle. It's the Secret Layer X Street Fighter. We have, what, three, six, eight nine really new cards to talk about there so we're gonna go over each one of them they're all amazing spoiler alert and then we're gonna tell you what we think yeah we're gonna we're gonna go over them pretty quickly we're gonna give you a basic rundown of what they do first thing we got ihanda he's the sumo fighter from the street fighter series and he cares about toughness and butts now come on this sumo man cares about butts i love it so much and he's got the number 100 on it, it yeah up to 100 this up card, to 100 this card is really really cool awesome design Cares about butts. Next, Ryu, one of the main characters of the whole entire franchise. He actually does the Hidoken. He has training, and he just does damage. And if he does excess damage, guess what? You're drawing cards. Really sweet design here. Yeah, Ken gets first strike, and he helps you cast sorceries from the graveyard. Blanca shocks your opponents when you target him. Like, it's literal shock because it's two damage each. It's so cool. And you get his trample if you cast a bunch of spells. Chun, uh, Chun Li, the multi-kicker. So good. It Come has multi-kick. Come on. The flavor on these cards... Could not be better. Going back to Ryu just for one second, the it's the they use the untap symbol because it represents the whatever the, the motion, joystick motion to do a Hadouken. Uh, to do a Hadouken, which is incredible flavor. Like so cool. Every one of these cards is just so cool. The pacifist. They'll seem. Uh, they'll seem the pacifist. Uh, what does he do? I, he's the one who cares. He's got hexproof. He cares I would, about reach creatures. Yeah. That's what he does. Well, and he's got the hexproof, which I always thought was great because I could never hit him. <laughs> I remember just never being able to hit the, yeah, hit the he, computer. He has teleport. That's yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. So he's super cool. Just 
Again, the design here is super great. Guile is red, white, and blue. He's an American soldier. Come on. Oh, my God. Everything about this is so flavorful. What does he do? Uh, he you get, like gets charge counters, and then once you get one, you can remove one to like give him indestructible and lifelink or like shoot four damage or something. Yeah, and for the last one, it's, the guy, it's Zangief, who rustles, the guy who rustles bears. Yeah, the it's, red cyclone. He's the red cyclone. Uh, yeah, he's a Russian, he's a Russian bear fighter. Mm -hmm. And if he, deals ex if he kills a creature, deals excess damage to it, boom. You draw a card, which is already super cool. I think cool. they, like, sacrifice a non-land permanent. Oh, no, permanent. wait. Yeah, you don't draw a card. They sacrifice a non-land, non-creature permanent. And you get a card. And then the last card that we left off, which is the bonus card in all of these, is Hadouken. the Hadouken. It's just Lightning Bolt. It just deals three, but it's the Hadouken. Every single one of these cards is not only a great design, they have great art, they look good, and like we said, we're just now foils. They're not going to curl because they're not foil cards. So, such a cool secret layer. This is one of, this probably is the coolest X secret layer that they've done because we've done Walking Dead and Stranger Things up to this point now. This has got to be the coolest one. We also, we have Arcane too, but that hasn't come out yet. Uh, but yeah, so this is like the fourth one. This mm -hmm. has to be the coolest. I can't, this, Street Fighter is such a cool thing and there has to, this is the most overlap, I think, I would guess, for Magic. Yeah, fans? For fans that play Magic. Wait a minute, are these function like are these mechanically unique and won't get reprinted or they are going to get reprinted they will get reprinted there is no more there is no more of the mechanically unique will not get reprinted cards in secret layers what set is going to have the untap symbol in it? <laughs> well <laughs> i was just looking at it, they're all so weird no they're going to be in the they're all they're going to be in set, set boosters, boosters. So that's they, what it so is so it won't be super weird all these cards are amazing so the grade the street fighter which is the secret layer x street fighter it's an a plus i, I would suggest everyone buy these if you have any sort of, even if you have the slightest nostalgia toward this game, if you're a huge Magic fan, you're playing Magic, these are cool. I mean, I ha I'm going to build a deck. I don't know which one, but I will 100% build a deck because I have even a little bit of nostalgia, and these cards encapsulate the characters so perfectly. I mean, I would say if you are a Commander player and you're a fan of Commander, here's eight new Commanders. I don't even think it matters that much if you're a big Street Fighter person. I mean, mm -hmm. you obviously know what it is. Here's eight new commanders to build around. You like one of them? Probably worth it to just buy the whole thing. Yeah, they're all really, really cool. So A plus, we strongly suggest buying this one. Yeah, the Street Fighter one is worth thirty nine ninety nine non foil. It's worth fifty foil, which is forty nine ninety nine. Yeah, again, we're still gonna suggest buying it at that price. All right, the second part of the drop is the Showcase Neon Dynasty Ink Foil Edition. This comes with four cards, only in foil. Yikes. So you can, well, there's not even a non-foil version of these. The four cards are Ghostly Prison, poop. Freed from the Wheel, niche. a combo piece. Uh, Beseju, who shelters all, niche. Hall the Bandit Lord, niche. None of these cards see that much play in Commander, and I'll go ahead and throw, a, throw out that asterisk for everyone who's about to tell me that Freed from the Wheel does see play. Yep, but how much is Freed from the Wheel? Like 10 cents, $2, maybe $5? It's just, I don't know that I'm getting all this value from there's one card that has applications and the rest that we think are either bad or super mega niche. Yeah, and besides anything, on top of all that, all these niche cards that, you know, they might have some home somewhere, they just come in only foil. And I cannot, if I can't guarantee that something is going to be a quality product, I am never going to suggest you buy it. So I straight up give this an F. Do not buy this because you do not want to be playing this game where you wonder is this going to bend? Are these going to be playable on my deck? It's not worth playing. Now, would this get a high grade if it wasn't foil? No, but it definitely gets an F when it's only foil. But it's like, so it's less cards than all the ones we're about to talk about. It's four cards. It's $50. I just like, none of this sounds appealing to me where I'm paying twelve fifty for any of these cards. Yeah, exactly. So let's just move on from this $50 secret layer. Okay, we can stop mentioning the price of all of these because every single one of these drops from now until the end of the video is going to be $30 non-foil and $40 foil. And we're really only talking about if it's worth it to buy the non-foil version because we basically said we're not buying the foils. We're, it, personally, we're never going to do that again until we see consistent change in how they're foiled. But we got the Lil Walkers. It's like the cutest secret layer maybe ever. I don't know. The Cats one was pretty cute, but they announced this one like forever ago. And now we've got the little chibi walkers. It's a Johnny Mentor of Heroes, Soren, Grim Nemesis, Tamiyo the Mood Sage, Asiak, Ashiok, Dream Render, and Angrath the Flame Chained. I saw a wild theory on Reddit that these are supposed to be the completed planeswalkers. I don't believe it, but it is fun to theorize 
with absolutely no evidence. That is always fun. Yeah, just because Tamiya was one of them. So well, And Ashiok is all up in their business. That is true. So with these, uh, none of these are incredible in Commander. Ashiok is a solid graveyard hate piece. That one's great. The uh, rest, I think, kind of stink. Yeah, with some ability. And she has a nice little stacks piece. She's definitely not a bad card whatsoever. No, Ashiok is an actively good card. The rest stink, is what I'm saying. Yeah. I've seen Soren Grim Nemesis be decent, but he's six mana, and six mana is a hard slot to be filling. None of these are crazy. I think the next best one is probably Angrath. I think it was like Ashiok <laughs> is a playable card. Angrath, I've seen it be all right. You know, the plus one is a three for one. They're just all. The, uh, the real problem with all these Planeswalkers is they're all just that five mana mark. That's where Planeswalkers have to be like, okay, you better be Liliana Dreadhorde General up here when you're five, six mana. And none of these are that. No, I don't. They have a problem with giving us good planeswalkers in these secret layers. It's really weird. Yeah, uh, but so for this grade, we gave it a C plus. But that's purely because the aesthetics of these cards are amazingly cute. They look so good. They're they're a removal. I love when we go away from like ma normal magic card and we get something cute, unique. We never see the, this. Yeah, we've never seen chibi planeswalkers, and I'm super glad to have it right now. C+, plus. I, I would actually suggest buying this one because they're so cute. They're low on the power level, but they're high on the novelty. These are one of those cards, uh, one of those uh, that are so cool looking that I'll probably find a home for one or two of them in a deck just because they're so cute. Make an exception. Now, introducing Kaito Shizuki. This is a really cool Planeswalker now that we've been introduced to in our new set, Friends with the Wanderer. You know, he's a ninja Planeswalker, which that's already really cool. These are all cards with him in the art with their own unique style of art. So the first one we have is Brain Feast. CDH Staple, absolutely a solid card for CDH. It's a combo card. I think it's good if you're trying to self-mill. You know, if you cast mm -hmm. three spells, you just mill yourself for nine. That's pretty good. Snap is, I just think, a great card. If you're trying to spell sling, if you're trying to hold up mana, if you care about... Prowess or Magecraft, this card's pretty great, actually. Bribery mm -hmm. is just a good card. I don't like it. I would never play it, but it is absolutely a good magic card. Yeah, I think it's very it's very strong in Commander. Even if you don't necessarily like it, like BZ doesn't, it's incredibly strong. And it's nice to get another printing of this because this was starting to creep up in price. I think this was hitting the $25, $30 range just for bribery. So you're basically... You're in on value, then. You're in for value, yeah. Uh, Unmask, that's a legacy card. That's If you play some legacy, maybe in paper, you know, it's not really a format that sees too much paper play anymore, but if you do, that's great for that. And Shadow of a Doubt, a card I would like to try in a commander deck. In fact, I might just try it in my ninja's deck just because it fits thematically. Yeah, I was looking to think this. I was like, hmm, can I put this in my clue deck? It's such a cool card. It's probably not a fun card at all because we play fetch lands all day. Yeah, it's the cla it's it's gonna be wasteland, and that's oh. it's like hey, wow, it's turn two. Are you having fun? Yeah, exactly. So yeah, uh, this one we gave a B. I think all the cards in here are solid and uh, C play in some formats. Like we said, brain freeze and CDH snap is just like you said a good card. Bribery great. Unmask Legacy, Shadow of a Doubt, uh, a modern card that maybe you can play somewhere else. <laughs> I mean, I'm gonna give. It's This is Commander Review, so the Unmask doesn't matter to me, and I'm not going to factor it in. It's 3 out of 5, plus 0.5 for coolness on Shadow of Doubt, but I think it still ends up as a B. 30 bucks, bribery gives you most of the stuff back. I mean, it'll drop the price a little bit, but then you got four other cards. Yeah, but these arts are all great. So yeah, three solid cards in the secret layer is awesome. Great artwork. B, definitely the grade for this one. Next secret layer is special guest, Yuko Shimizu, who I just now learned was like the original creator of Hello Kitty, so she's basically awesome, and these are super stylized versions of Hokori Dust Drinker, Kira Great Glass Spinner, Eidolon of the Great Revel, and Elvish Spirit Guide, with a special bonus note for the Elvish Spirit Guide, because this is the first ever opportunity anyone's ever had to get it in foil. Now, uh, for these, I don't think any of them are too commander playable in outside of CEDH. Now, Elvish Spirit Guide is a good CEDH card, and a card you will play there. And your chance to get it in foil is actually really cool, Granted, it doesn't curl. This being the first chance to get a card in foil is very notable because I would like to just call back to the only other time I think we've had this was with the Carpet of Flowers. Um, I forgot about that. Yeah, when they, it was in the, I believe it was in the Johann Vess, uh, Yo, Johannes Voss, I'm terrible with names, uh, Secret Layer, and it was the only chance to get that foil, and that one is worth actually quite a bit. So this could be similar to that. Still not going to suggest buying foils because... We're not, we don't want you to get crappy looking cards. Eidolon, Kira, and Hoki are just not cards you're going to put in almost any deck. I think, yeah, this secret is kind of a whiff in terms of like the functionality of the cards. If you're a big Yuko fan, all right, you know, get them for collector's pieces. But I think as playable, 
Commander pieces, I'm off of it. I think it's like a D minus for, it, for Commander. Yeah, it's like a D minus. I, again, the art is good. I'm not going to sit and deny that the art is no good. No way, it's great, yeah. Yeah, uh, but it's not these are cards that aren't even like fun playable. Like, Hiroki is just an unfun magic card. I mean, the, they're literally like three stacks pieces. It's, it's like you can't target my creatures, take damage for spells, and fast El- mana. Yeah, and then Winter Orb. Yeah, and yeah, Winter Orb. And then Elvish Elvish Spirit Guy that isn't even when are we ever gonna play that in Commander? We're just not unless we're s- literal C E D H. Yeah, so this is kind of just like I would imagine not designed for Commander. So the other format people can pick it up and we'll give it a D minus and move on. Yep. What's next? Well, it's the shades not included. This is a set of basic lands. Designed by man, my man on Twitter, Ben makes magic art. Ben makes stuff, whatever he goes by on Twitter. He's your man. He, he's he's really cool. He's a nice guy. I've seen him on Twitter a lot, and I appreciate his artwork. And the art on these is amazing. It's so good, and it looks so good. I'm planning on taking these and putting them into. I have a four color deck, so I won't use the forest, but I'll use the other four just in those decks because they just they look great. Solid A. I mean, obviously from a perspective of money. Basic lands are worth nothing, right? Because uh, you can get them for anything if you don't care what it looks like. But these look amazing. I just just easy A for me. Yeah, I think it's an easy A. The problem with some of these that I think our friends have pointed out mostly to us, but the problem with the basic lands sets is like, well, I can't. I'm not going to spend two hundred and fifty dollars so that I have enough basics for even my two color deck. Mm-hmm. You just like you can't get five forests. You kind of got to have the nitpicking nerds four color mana base and just play like one of each. It's so weird that it's like tough to even figure out what to do. So I don't know. I would wonder if I would even maybe downgrade this to an A minus, but it's in the A range. It's, it's really sweet. Yeah, they just they look their looks are so good that it kind of overtakes that. It is a little sad. Uh, I wish that they could they would do these separate like hey, buy buy the same price by five of the forest, by five of the islands. And like you can kind of just separate it. But yeah, I appreciate all of these. They all look really good. I kind of think that maybe they should just do like 10 forests for the same price and like maybe we should be getting more than five basic lands for 30 bucks i mean that might be the truth i mean but regardless of any of that they look very good and they're great art let's move on to pictures of the floating world it's the stylized similar to the uh, neon dynasty basic lands we got the the hideaway lands with japanese text and they're the ones that enter tapped look at the top four and then you pick one and you can cast it for free with certain stipulations windbreast kites wants you to attack with three creatures this turn shell dock isle is impossible because the library needs 20 or fewer cards in it Halltooth hollow is rough because I think everybody has to have no cards in hand. Spine Rock Null, doable. You need to deal seven damage, or someone needs to take seven damage. And then Mossberg Bridge is the easiest one. You just need 10 power. Yes, and something really uh, unique about these, if you didn't know, they made this keyworded Hideaway 4. Hideaway used to only be 4, meaning that when you did Hideaway, you automatically looked at 4. Now they're doing it in numbers, which is going to be... You know what that means. Which means we're probably going to get a reprint of Hideaway very soon, keyworded in a different way than usual. Uh, like you said, Wimbrus Kites and Moss Warp Bridge are two of the easiest ones to do, and they're really good cards. Like, I suggest putting them in quite a few different kinds of decks, but the other three, they're just not very good. You're not going to play them any places. That being said, the art's amazing. Uh, I think the Wimbrus Kites, I'll bring that up because, oh my god, I love this art for Wimbrus Kites. I think it is just like 10 out of 10 art. And if I, again, like, it's one of those words, like, I don't have a home for Wimbrus Kites, but I want to find one. It's <laughs> where you're just like are tempted now. I do have Windburst Kites in my, my mono white deck, and we did order the entire non foil bundle, so I guess it's going in. Yeah, I mean, it, it looks I'll happily so, do that. It looks so good. It's beautiful. Um, the arts on these are really beautiful, and the style is beautiful, but there's only two of the cards that we think are necessarily playable in Commander, so we gave it a C. It's right in the middle. It's an average one. I would say, yeah, this is probably worth buying overall. All right, and last but not least, we have Kamigawa, the manga, the cards. Um, we got five unique cards here. First is Idyllic Tutor, which tutors up an enchantment for us. Then we got Swords the Plowshare, one of the best removal spells in the whole format. Solve the equation, you know, another tutor for three. Uh, while we're on three mana tutors, why not Praetor's Grasp, uh, where we tutor our opponent's library for whatever we want. And last but not least is Vale of Summer with awesome Tamu art. Yeah, three three mana tutors. Three three mana tutors are in this one and two one mana inner Two of the best one-mana instant interaction spells. <laughs> yeah, we had said I, before that we're like, oh, solve the equations. I don't think that really goes into CDH. Apparently, it does see some play in CDH, so I guess this is my six-month late correction to that. These <laughs> cards are all really good, I think, in terms of a secret layer. Like, solve the equation and ideal tutor are lower power cards, same with Praetor's Grasp, but in they're like definitely 100% cards you could play. It's not like Howl Tooth Hollow where I'm just like, what is this? What am I supposed to do with this? Or Ghostly Prison where I'm like, I think this card's actively bad. It's like, these cards can all fit in your deck, especially Swords of Plowshares and Veil of Summer, which are insane. This is, I think, in my head, five for five. Yeah, I 
I agree. All these cards are in, playable in Commander in some power level. Sure. Whether it's super high or in the middle power level. And like you said, a 5 for 5 hit, that's incredible. You don't, you don't see those ever. So we're going to give this an A because they're not like all the best Commander cards, but they're really good. And I want to say... I'm a big fan of the swords, the plowshares. I I mean, they keep doing really cool swords, the plowshares, but the wanderer doing the single chop cutting gin and oh, it's so good. It's such a satisfying art. Just a, a request. Stop making new arts for sources. There's so many. Give us a different card. I can't play all the cool arts. I can't even I can't even put one in each deck because there's like fifty. Just pick a different card. Make it path to exile. So I at least have less choices of they awesome just, art. They just did Path to Exile, literally. I mean, they used to pick something else. Like, you gotta pick a new white card and give me the awesome slicing Jinko Taxi's art on that. Yeah, so uh, that this one is awesome. Like I said, it's an A. This is great. Stellar. Absolutely stellar. So, overall, we need to rank the bundle. So, we're ranking it including the foil one. We'd give it like a C plus because the foil kind of stinks and you don't want to be buying that, in our opinion. It's a lot more price for product that might be worse. I mean, we've seen when we did all our scan through of every secret layer and we kind of communicated some of the worst ones to you guys, it was like the foil was like 13 and, or the, the, the normal was like 13 and the foil was like 14 where it's just like, no one wants to pay this premium tax for cards that kind of stink yeah. um, quality wise. Yeah. 100% true. So what the bundle that we would recommend buying if someone's going to buy a bundle would be the non foil, non something bundle it's called something along those lines non stop non foil non stop non foil bundle it's all the non foils so you don't have to worry about any curling it's like 180 i believe right and it also doesn't include the second secret layer which is the the neon ink foils cuz those only come foil right so it doesn't have those which are some of the worst ones so you kind of remove an f from the total list and remove the foils from all of them the b yeah so if you uh i would just suggest buying all of these honestly they all have their you know, pluses and they all look really good. We bought the bundle, the non-foil bundle, and we suggest most people do that. If you can afford it, obviously, we're not we're not saying, hey, if you have only $180 in your bank account, buy this. Boy, would that, a, that would be weird. That'd be a really, really bad idea. Don't what, do that. What would that advice even sound like? It's like, <laughs> I drop everything. <laughs> Next meal, forget about it because we got $180 to spend on Swords to Plowshares artwork. Yeah, this is as a rock solid B. Definitely recommend the non-foil, non-stop bundle. Yes, 100%. But that is our video. Special shout outs to every single one of our patrons love you all as much as we can without making you uncomfortable seriously you guys give us direct support via patreon.com and we can't express how much we appreciate it enough and i i I wouldn't want to like imply anything but since we started shouting out birthdays birthdays have continued to happen so i wonder what would happen if we stopped shouting out birthdays i don't want to even find out so you gotta you better support the patreon we don't want anything weird to happen or you can go to the tcg player affiliate link if you just want to buy some cards because that's what we're all here for right we want to buy some magic cards like Maybe some of the cards that are here, like, I don't want to buy Jinky Taxi as Sliced in Half Source of Plowshares. I want the other 16 promos to put in my Source of Plowshares deck. Well, go to the link, click, buy all the Source of Plowshares, and then when you navigate and check out on all the Source of Plowshares, we get a kickback on every Source of Plowshares you buy. Yeah, and you can buy other cards, too, I promise. It's you not- can, but they're all just Source of Plowshares. There's not just Source of Plowshares on the website. You can also go to dragonshield.com and buy the best sleeves in the multiverse. Good sleeves. They're literally amazing. You get some awesome, awesome sleeves. And you're supporting the nerds. Seriously, when we say best sleeves in the multiverse, we literally mean sleeves. they're the best sleeves we've ever used. Good sleeves. I wanted to say it again. Okay. Do we have a tidbit fair. about our lives? You said you had something, but you forgot it. Oh, right? I did, and I did forget about it. All right. We have we have the audience. Uh, I think we can do a little experiment as the tidbit. So we were drafting. We draft every Tuesday with our core core member group of awesome people. And so, uh, our friend Thomas, shout out to Tom, brought Subway. Down, downstairs in the in the room we were playing in, and I was like, "Oh, Subway!" And then he begins to talk about his Subway meal, and I think our friend Ken, shout out to Ken, <laughs> sorry, but he's like, "Oh, he's fresh." And then funny guy Eric is the funny man of the group. He says, "I want to hear what, what you at home think about yeah, how funny g- the following." We will not, is. we will not give you any of our opinions on how funny this is. No, I'm going to say it, and I'm going to end the video. R- yeah, uh, rank it out of ten. Out of ten, I need to hear how fun. Fo- given the Context, how funny is the following Because that was statement? the whole context we got as well. Right. So how funny is the following statement? Eat flesh. Peace out, Tribe Scout.